Hello, welcome to the Mark Janard Show. Let's talk about a tiny home server, right? That you can build. Let me, let's break it down in this video. But before I do that, hit that subscribe button and the like button. So someone may need a home server for several practical and technical reasons, right? Whether it's a centralized file sharing and media streaming thing, you know, a home server allows anyone in the household to access photos, videos, musics, and documents from any device on the home network in real time, making sharing convenient and efficient, right? They can also use it for power efficiency and device performance by offloading tasks like media playback to the server. Individual devices like laptops or desktops consume less power and maintain better performance as they don't have to run heavy processes themselves. If you want a data, a data backup or improved data you know, security, basically a home server can automatically back up data from all connected devices protecting against data loss from hardware failure accidental deletion or malware it offers enhanced control over privacy compared to cloud services it's basically has basically an always on availability and remote access so home servers are designed to run 24 by 7 you know providing uninterrupted access to files websites or services hosted at home even when personal computers are off or rebooting they can also be accessed remotely if configured right by enabling access to data from anywhere. Uh, if you want hosting of personal services, so users can self host websites, game servers, media centers, smart home management or development environments, giving them full control and customization without relying on third party, you know, providers. Then there's a the learning and skill development, right? Setting up and managing a home server can be a valuable project for anyone, uh, helping, you know, them gain, helping you to gain experience in networking, server administration and security. Right. So that's one of the reasons why somebody would want a home server. So if you're on a budget, let's look at an example that you can build your own home server. So you can start with a 10 inch mini rack build, right? Uh, which is a, you know, it's basically, it's basically, this is a popular and affordable approach. Uh, basically you want to build a six U 10 inch mini rack using the timber 3d printed shelves and a patch panel, which is suitable for mini uh, PCs and network hardware. You know, this setup is desk friendly, is compact and highly customizable, right? You have the 3D print files, which is free to download. There's the 10 inch 1U rack mount for HP Pro Desk Mini GP, the 10 inch rack shelf, the 10 inch keystone patch panel, that's 10 ports, right? The tools you're gonna need is a screwdriver, a drill, right? Uh, a pocket hole jig optional. That's basically for the sturdier timber joints, a 3d printer, or, you know, basically use a printing service for shelves slash panels. Now let's get into the assembly, build the frame, cut timber to the size of the racks frame height for six U depth for 10 inch equipment, assemble using the screws and optionally a pocket hole jig for strength, then install the rack strips. So attach a metal rack strips to the inside edges for mounting shelves and hardware. Then print and install the shelves, 3D print shelves and patch panels using the provided modules, right? Secure them to the rack strips, mount equipment. So add mini PCs, network switches, or raspberry Pi units using 3D printed or commercially available rack mounts. Then in regards to the cable management, you can use zip ties or Velcro straps for tidy cable routing. Optionally, you can add a small power strip or USB-C PDU for power distribution. There is an alternative. You can use the ultra uh, compact Pi server rack for an even smaller all in one solution, which fits on a desk. Use a raspberry Pi 4B with the Pi sugar three plus UPS for backup power. The geek worm M.2 SSD shield for storage, the 3d printed mini rack case, the custom design. So basically this build can run Docker containers, which basically includes a small UPS and an extremely quiet and energy efficient, uh, you know, aspect of it to secure a home server. You're going to want to implement a layered approach, right? So this is what you're going to want to do, right? You're going to want to keep your software and firmware updated. So regularly update your systems, uh, your server systems, op you know, operation, right? Uh, applications and firmware to patch the vulnerabilities, use strong passwords and two factor authentication, right? Set complex, unique passwords for all accounts and enable two FA MFA, whatever you want to call it, wherever possible to reduce the risk of unauthorized access, then enable and configure firewalls for it. So use firewalls on both your server and router to block unauthorized connections. Tools like PFSense are effective for network segmentation and control, then limit the exposed services and ports. So only the ports and services you absolutely need. The fewer the services exposed to the internet, the lower the risk. Then disable, you know, the direct root slash super user login, 
for SSH access, disable the direct root login and require users to authenticate as a regular use user before escalating the privileges with sudo. You can use a VPN for remote access, right? Instead of exposing services directly to the internet, you can require a VPN access for, for you know, remote connections. You know, you have WireGuard or OpenVPN are popular choices for home servers. There's the network segmentation. So place your server on a separate VLAN or subnet from the rest of your home devices. This limits the damage uh, if the server is compromised. Then encrypt the data at rest and, and in transit. So use encryption tools like the VeraCrypt for stored you know, data and ensure the secure protocols like HTTPS or SFTP for data transfers and regularly backup, you know, follow the three to one backup rule, three copies of your data on two different media and, you know, with one off site or cloud backup. That's what I have for you today. Please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and the like button. I appreciate your viewership. Stay safe. See you in the next video.